Today we'll be looking at OpenAI's new tutorial series, how to build an AI that can answer questions about your website. Let's see first how it works and then we'll go over the tutorial. This code is in the tutorial has already web crawled OpenAI's website and is able to now answer questions about it. Let's ask it what is the latest text to image model from OpenAI. And it answers DALI 2. I'm going to ask it to tell me more about DALI 2. It answers DALI 2 is a new AI system that can create realistic images and art from descriptions in natural language and it continues. So you can ask any question that is related to OpenAI's website and it should be able to answer. OpenAI created a new tutorial section under their documentation and from their website, platform website. So this is their first documentation. We're going to go over all the code and we'll be creating the environment and running everything together. So this should be a good exercise. They don't use any additional packages like LangChain or anything like that. They do use Beautiful Soup. And for this example, they're using their own website to be part, to be uh, crawled, but you can use any website. Just be careful when you're crawling. Most of web crawling is not a problem, but you have to make sure that you're not crawling private data or anything like that. Use good judgment and always read the website's policies if, it, if this is allowed. As you see, the entire, I've copied the entire code to my Visual Studio code. I've added informative doc strings from the tutorial website itself. So this works. This I run this and it had gone to OpenAI and created both the scrape.csv and embedding.csv for search. And it uses GPT-3 API to send the context in and get the answers. We'll be going over all this code bit by bit. I've also modified some areas where it asks if you want the embedding to be recreated if the embedding.csv exists. And I've also modified the end of it so that we can continue to ask it questions because I put them, I put the I put that part under a true while true loop. So I'll actually be sharing this code with my Patreon supporters. But everything that is necessary to create something like this is existing in this website and in their GitHub repository. We're going to take a look at those as well. I have created a brand new folder and a file that is empty currently called main.py. We're going to be starting from scratch. Let's start with creating a new environment. I will start a terminal here. You can also do this from your command prompt. To start a command prompt inside of Visual Studio Code, I come here to this arrow and click on command prompt. I will be using Conda to create the new environment, but you can also use VENV from Python. I am right now currently in my base environment. I have written the command Conda create dash n and the name of the environment. I'm calling it WebChat2 because I already have one that is called WebChat. And I'm specifying a Python version 3.9 because previously I worked with 3.9 for this project and it worked. So I'm going to stick with it. And then I just click enter and the new environment will be created. You just say yes to proceed. This is going to take some time. Our new environment is created. It says that to activate this environment, we can use this Conda Activate WebChat 2, which we will do. And we will enter that environment right here. I will put the link to this tutorial. I recommend you read it, especially the getting started part to find out how you can set up your OpenAI API key in your environment variables. This is a necessity. Also, you can go through the quick start tutorial. We won't be talking about this in this video. Also, the link to the GitHub repository from this page is now broken, but actually you can find it under the OpenAI cookbook. I'll put the link in the description. It's under the apps and web crawl Q&A right here. The entire code is here. I have made modifications to this code, which I'll share with my Patreon supporters. Also, it is a hefty requirements file, which we will have to install uh, each requirement from this file. There's an easy way to install directly from the requirements that takes. So I'm going to copy this entire file. I could have also downloaded it and I will make a requirements that text file here and paste the requirements into this requirements that text file and save it. We install all the pip install requirements by writing pip install dash r requirements that text. Hopefully we won't run into any issues. If we do, we'll take care of them along the way. This should take a couple of minutes. So there's quite a bit of installs that need to take place. Okay, we have gotten our first error. I hit this error before too. HTML 1.13 while installing runs into an error. It's right here in the requirements. I've dealt with this error and I believe I've taken some notes here that, where was it? Yeah, I did some research and because of this, I found out maybe that the PIP itself and the setup tools actually might be older versions and that it's having problem installing that uh, package. 
So I'm going to run in order to upgrade the setup tools and then the upgrade the pip. So to upgrade the setup tools is pip install dash upgrade setup tools. I'm going to run this. We have installed setup tool. Next is to upgrade the pip itself by saying python.exe-m pip install dash upgrade pip. Oh, I hit a typo in Python. I forgot the H. So now we're upgrading pip itself. We have successfully upgraded pip. Now we're going to try to reinstall the requirements. And it seems like so far we have we didn't see that error, but it's still continuing to install all the packages. Everything was pip installed without a hiccup. Let's continue with tutorial. First, it's it's asking you to create a virtual environment. It's using venv from Python. You can use that. If you like to use conda, just like I, you would like to go to miniconda. This is what I'm using. I'll put the link in the description. Next step is the we're building the web crawler. If this is collapsed, you have to open it. And then let's copy the first line of code. First lines of code. And paste it right here. See, as you see, it says that import BS4 could not be resolved from source. As you see, in the terminal, we are in our web chat underscore two environment. But if you do control shift P, and then select interpreter, and you have to be in the right environment. If you don't see your newly created environment under here, then just reset your Visual Studio code. You should be able to see it after that. By reset, close it, and then reopen it. This code creates a HTTP URL pattern, so making sure that the pattern is correct. And then we are giving the URL here, openai.com. And then the next class is to parse the HTML and get the hyperlinks. And actually the next function right here is going to take that URL, so URLs from the list as an argument, and then actually get read the HTML content and return all the hyperlinks found on that page for crawling purposes. Let's paste, paste this here as well. So everything's good so far. As you see, the final function is returning parser.hyperlink. Parser Next setup for lines of code is going to crawl through the hyperlinks and find the only ones that are related to the OpenAI. If there are any hyperlinks that is, that is referring to an outside website, it will actually get rid of those. So we'll only have left with clean links list, which are within the domain of OpenAI. Let's paste this here as well. Next is the crawl function, is the final step in the web scraping task. It keeps track of the visited URLs to avoid visiting the same page, which might be linked across multiple pages on the site. It also extracts the raw text from a page without the HTML text and writes it to a text content into a local text file specific to the page. You can see, I'll just copy this and paste it under our code. And now if we run this, actually, we we'll should be able to see some folders and text files created. Let's just run it and see what happens. As you see, it is visiting all the hyperlinks and it had created a text folder and it's writing all the text files. And also this created a process folder, but the processing hadn't taken place yet. So this takes a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll let it run. Eventually this process, I've done it before, runs into an encoding error, but it already gets a lot of documents from OpenAI by the time it runs it into that error. I wasn't able to go past it. And it takes a long time to get to that error anyway. So we'll just wait for this to be completed. Okay, this was the error. I believe it is encoding related or the file. Uh, I'm not sure what this is, but it just has a problem writing at this point. Anyway, as you see, we have quite a few text documents. If we were to view them, it has it collected all the text from different HTML files. And as you see, there are a lot of spaces here. We're going to deal with that in just a moment. So we are done with the crawling part of the process. You can actually collapse these instructions if you like. Next is the starting the embedding. And as you see, this next remove new lines function is going to actually help us removing some of the, some of the new empty lines and whatnot. Let's actually collapse this text. We're going to add this here and we want to comment out the crawl function because we've crawled. We don't want this entire thing to run again. So again, this function is going to remove and make it neat for all these documents for the embedding process. It says right here that all these new lines actually makes it complicate the embedding process. We have pasted the remove new line function. It's actually being called at the next few lines of code. Let's copy this here at this stage. Here at this stage, we are importing pandas library and uh, right here. And after that, 
at this point on line 162 we are activating the remove new lines and we are bringing a, we are turning it into a data frame and also we're writing it to the csv file under the problem right here in this folder which is currently empty i have changed this to print df head so we can actually see it if you were to run this scrape csv is created as you see right here all nice and neat and we are printing the head of our data frame as you see next step is to import tick token and account get a count of every column which exists in our data frame because we will be limited by our token limitations of the large language model so we want to see how many tokens we have on each row this last line the after and tokens histogram creates the histogram but we are not showing this to do that we Matplotlib, SPLT, and then PLT.show. So if you were to run this, we have printed the head of our data frame, and also we are seeing the distribution of the values in our columns. Our histogram shows that there are a lot of columns with 1,000 or more tokens in them. We want to limit that, so to do that, the next step will be to set max tokens, and then go over all the columns, and then set the maximum token to 500. Let's go ahead and do that. And I will copy the next lines of code too to show the histogram. We again have to plt.show it. So if you run, this is our first histogram. As you see, we get to see a lot of tokens and columns. But after the processing, our maximum token count is limited at 500. And most of the column rows have 500 or so tokens. This is good. So this took a minute or two to create the embeddings. Now we can see the embeddings right here, broken into text and vector chunks. This is what we need. Now we can do similar to search over it. Now that we have created our embeddings, we don't need to run this again. I'm just going to comment it out because it's with both costs, tokens and money, and also a lot of compute time. Next step is to convert the embeddings.csv into a NumPy array because NumPy has many useful uh, methods and functions we, we can use which OpenAI implemented we won't run it on its own next we're going to get the create context we'll copy it create context will do a, a similarity search we're using distance distances from embeddings and then return that distance to be used with the function answer questions let's first paste create context function right here and after that we will get the answer question, which we are making an API called the text of inches 003. And if you look at the prompt that we are sending, we are actually assigning the context as context with, along with the question. So let's copy and paste this as well. Now, the only thing that is left is to ask some questions. We can copy these three sample questions that they have created for us, OpenAI team. We can, we'll have to print these as well. I have put these calls into a print statement. I'm going to comment out the last two. The debug is set to false for the first question. And what this means is that it won't print the context. As you see, if debug is true, then it will actually print the context as well. So the first one is just going to give us an answer. Let's run this. First question was, what day is it? And it's answering Saturday, March 3rd, which is not correct. It is prompted to not answer the question if the if it can't be answered by the current context. It's supposed to say, I don't know, which is in the example here as well. But for some reason, it wants to answer as March 3rd. That's why you have to be careful when working with large language models. They can be unpredictable. Let's move on to the second question. Let's run this one. The question is, what is your newest embeddings model? And it answers the newest embeddings model is text embedding ADA002. Let's run the last question, which is what is JetGPT with debug set to true, so we can see the context. So it answers JetGPT is a research release from OpenAI, and it actually prints the context that it has chosen. So all this context, starting with context, is sent to GPT-3 to use all for the sole purpose of answering this single question. I'll put the link to the tutorial. I think it is very useful. I recommend that you read it all because it's quite a few lines of code and it can be overwhelming. This is why I created a, another main.py file, which I'll be uploading to for my Patreon supporters. I'll put the link in the description. And I've copied the explanations from the web page and I put them as doc strings so that you'll see what each and every function is doing. 
I've also added I've also added a condition right here which checks if the embeddings.csv exists. If it exists, it asks, do you want to continue with the embedding process anyway? You would have to say yes or no, because if embeddings exist, probably you don't want to run it again. Instead of commenting that out, I put a condition here. If you want the embeddings to be recreated, you say yes. If you say no, then this step is skipped. Also at the end, I put a while loop so that you can keep asking questions and you can also change the debug as well right here on this line. Let's run this again to see how it works. So it prints our first histogram and then the second, you can comment these out if you like. And after that, it asks, do you want to continue with the embedding process anyway? Because it has detected embeddings.csv. I'm going to say no, so we can skip that process. And then we can ask a question. What is OpenAI? I sent this question in. And it answers, OpenAI is a nonprofit artificial intelligence research company. Our goal is to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole. So this is pretty cool. This video was longer than my usual videos. It's just, there's a lot of code here to go over. It's a bit complicated, but thanks to OpenAI for creating this and thank you for watching. I'll put all the links in the description. If you want to access to the code that I have modified, then I'll put a link to the, my Patreon. Thank you for watching and join our Discord channel. See you in the next one.